Okay, what are you doing? What are you doing? Good to see you on this lovely, great sunny morning. You know what it's called? The District of Carlson. This great time of year. And this thing will feel super lovely to be here now. And thanks to those who have provided the tea and the, the goodies. And thanks to Alison for setting everything up. So our call to worship this morning is from Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. So let's sing our first hymn, this mission praise 116. From how you care, help us be. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Most of us will have a favourite chapter or a favourite verse that you like to read in the Bible. <coughs> Mine's is John chapter 13. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. And I was flicking through the Bible as you do with a pen to pick something to talk about this morning. And it almost opened right at this page, so I thought, well, that's the one for me. So, Jesus washes his disciples' feet. John chapter 13, verse 1. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head, as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only wash his feet, his whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said, not everyone was clean. Amen. I speak to God for his holy word. So we'll sing again. Christian praise be to the Son, immortal, invisible, God only wise.
verse 8, we read, No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. This short sentence tells me the length that Jesus, God's Son, is willing to go to in order to make his disciples and ultimately us see the importance of serving others. Not only in our congregations and communities, but to serve and love God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our strength, and with all our minds. Paul, writing to the Philippians, said this of Jesus in chapter 2, verse 6, who, being in very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. <coughs> Jesus' example suggests that loving as he has loved means taking the role of a servant, caring for the needs of others without expecting anything in return. His example suggests that it, that it is to do this not only for those who treat us well, but even for those who disappoint and hurt and betray us. John doesn't give an account of the institution of Holy Communion as the other Gospel writers do. Instead, he describes how Jesus gave himself to his followers at the last meal he and his disciples had together before the crucifixion. It was a natural expression of hospitality in their culture and climate for people to have their feet washed. When Jesus began to perform this servant's work for the disciples, Peter found it difficult. Surely it should have been the other way around, with Peter kneeling in front of Jesus to wash his feet. Peter's instinct was to refuse to let Jesus do it, but Jesus told him that if he wouldn't let him minister to him, he would, he would, he wouldn't, sorry, rely, really belong to him, to him. But the impetuous Peter immediately went to the other extreme, not just my feet, Lord, but my hands and my head too. I want to belong to you completely. Just let me minister to you, Peter. You don't have to do anything more. You already belong. The words servant, service and serve occurs well over 1100 times in the New International Version of the Bible. The studies have shown that volunteering or serving others is so good for the mind and body that it can ease symptoms of stress and depression. Tapping into our gifts and passions builds self-confidence, energy and strength. Serving others can also be the best distraction from our own worries. We make all sorts of rational explanations for not serving. I don't have time. I don't know what I would do. I don't have any special skills. They don't need me. The reality is, the Lord doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. God used men and women with similar doubts to change the course of history. For Christians, service is not optional. Service is something that should be part of our lives as true believers in the Word of God. God has given us this gift that in service we are able to share all that we have received from him in his grace. Service is the heart of Christian life. Jesus came to serve and to give. And those two verbs can also define our life on earth. If we understand that through service to others, it is really God whom we serve. We are more inclined to seek a higher revelation of what God wants to do through our lives. I'm certain that in the 
kingdom of God, we have a place, a purpose, and a mission to fulfill. We are not here by chance. We are called to reconcile and transform our environment. When we think of the Son of God coming to earth in human form, <coughs> to see the things that we see, to hear the things that we hear, to feel the things that we feel, joy, sadness, love, anger, fear and abandonment, how can we not serve him as he serves us? Amen. Our prayers for others, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing in all who are gathered here to worship and praise you. For share church, worship and fellowship in prayer, ever mindful that we, where we are, you are always with us. Great and mighty God, you are the strength of the weak, the refuge of the distressed and comforter of the sad and the lover of our souls. We stand in awe of your majesty and grace. We ask your blessing and all those in need, the homeless, the victims of violence, both domestic and global, the sick, the addicted and the grieving. We pray for your church and agencies at home and abroad who face dangers while trying to stop to bring substance and hope to those who have no fresh water and little or no food. We pray for our doctors, nurses, members of the armed forces, the police, fire and fire services. We pray for our minister Drew and his family, members of the kids session who are all involved in the church groups, to our <coughs> session club and delay our treasurer. and the members of our congregation. Almighty God, Father of the all, you are always with us. And we can only ask your forgiveness so many times we forget this in our daily lives. We bring all our burdens to you, Lord, our faults and our hangups, our doubts and fears, in the knowledge that you will strengthen and protect us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>
Son and Holy Spirit be with us and remain. 